use the four shot. Yeah. <laughs> shirt guy. Hello, Keaton. How are you? I see that you got your name. Right. Um, fantastic fingerings and how to find them. That is a subject of my live stream right now. Plus, details of the less live lesson that's going to happen tomorrow. Of course, this is unplanned. Here I am working on something. Um, and I'm going to read you first uh, something I wrote on my, uh, my Patreon. Hello, everyone. If you're joining late or early, whatever. Hello, hello to you. And I want to get polish this up a little bit, just concerning the fingerings, not so much the bowing, but definitely the fingerings, yeah? And I found that, I just played it right now, and there is a bit of a, an issue with, of course, if you know the jig from the second suite, there's an issue with this part right here, where you have to hold an E natural and play a B flat, and then you have to... I just can't do that physically, even on my new 7H cello. So the solution, you can play it here, here, and it's much easier, right there. And so, without any sort of issue, I'm going to try to make this entire first half do exactly what I'm about to read you. Mm -hmm. So I did skip some steps, and of course I used myself as a experiment at all times, and, and and also with my students. And I'm going to show you what is like for a Jonathan sort of Friday practice session. Here I'm not teaching today. I do want to just enjoy this bit. So I'm going to get right into. Um, yes, I'm good to see you too. My audience of all of two people right now. Two people, so thank you for watching if you're catching this live. Right, so I'm going to read, and if you can't hear me because I simply forgot to put on my microphone. <laughs> and, you know, things happen live, so, yes. So now we get to the wonderful inspirational quote that I wrote on my face on my Patreon page. If you ever want to be part of this discussion, join Patreon for as little as $2 a month. And you can do that. So, I'm going to... There's a little wires down there. Fantastic fingerings and how to find them, part one. When you are working on a piece in putting fingerings or even receiving them from a colleague or your teacher, you should understand those fingerings are suggestions. The better you, the better your teacher or colleague 
is aware of your competencies, the more effective their suggestions will be for you. All too often we are alone to find our own fingerings. The ideal is when you discover fantastic fingerings on your first try. Fingerings that flow easily with your, with your level of knowledge and enhance your intellectual skills on cello. Yet, we live in reality, not fantasy. Hence, we must approach this crucial task with strategy. Fingerings, like stated earlier, need to flow. Fingerings should function freely in your skill level while holding, while hiding. That is, I've said that so many times that I always miss that. <laughs> while hiding your limitations. All right. I'm going to say that again because I'm so frustrated of making that and messing that. Fingerings, like stated earlier, need to flow. Fingerings should function freely in your skill level while hiding your limitations. Lucky for you, I happen to be quite good at this. My ability to find fantastic fingerings. I This one thing I pride myself in. I have a whole video series about that. So today I will share with you my part one of my method starting at the very basics of how you can, you know, approach a piece of music and then it will be always summarized by a very short little mantra at the end that you must memorize. We start with the key signature. We should play, of course, the appropriate two or three octave scale with no less than two sets of fingerings. Right, this is annoying me, so I'm going to change to a less noisy Fuck stop. Right, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> right, and now, now my cello's too high. <laughs> Little details of being life. So, to reiterate, you need to play the appropriate two or, two or three octave scale with no less than two sets of fingerings, then repeat this review with a two or three octave arpeggio, again employing a minimum of two sets of fingerings. Take note that after two sharps and or three and three flats, you, you begin to lose open strings. And while using more extensions to play the low one and the plus four. Next, your general knowledge of the positions along the length of the cello neck will be key to your success. Naturally, if you if your knowledge is slim, you will choose the first position as much as possible. Knowledge of the fourth position is crucial for more effective fingerings because you will need to know and you will need to ask yourself, does it fit in first? Will they fit in fourth? So repeat after me. Do my fingerings fit in first? Will they fit in fourth? Hmm. It's very important to understand uh, what this is about. So before I get to any questions that have already been asked, I'm going to use myself as an example right here in this piece i'm going to go right to what i call the meat and potatoes the i want to get to the bulk of it and it happens right here switch to my shot this is crucial you have to play this in some sort of way like with the ringing e flat and of course, I haven't written it down. I'm even unsure of that, that four right there. So for the longest time, I've hated that four. So if something you hate, I'm just going to erase that right there. I'm just going to erase that. I think I can do something else. The goal is to play that right there. Yes, yeah, a lot happening. And we're going back a little too measure. So first, let's follow the formula. We are in D minor. If you're unfamiliar with this song, this is the sweet Sweet two, jig, last one. Looking here at the, and this is of course in both F major or D minor, however I wish. So I'm going to now play an F major and D minor. So since it's, it's minor, I should do both. Yeah. Go with the arpeggio. I'm going to, then I'll play it as the, um, as the uh, scale. So first one set of fingerings for the D minor. Just go right to a D minor. <laughs> D minor has one flat, so I'm going to choose one set of fingerings for both the two octave arpeggio and fingerings. Yeah, 
two octave arpeggio, and two octave scale. <laughs> Remember what I talked about? Does it fit in first? Will they fit in fourth? Very important. Oh, it does fit in first. Arpeggio. That was easy. Now I'm going to try to use more fourth position and maybe even some lower third position. I just discovered that I need to flush out that one part. Let me do it again. And then notice I like, go. Oh, the reason I'm screwing up on the one part is I am not confident on the placement of my four here in the fifth position. is a three. Feels a little bit awkward. Maybe I should find something a little bit in between. Yes? Um, it's not different enough. No, I do this. Of course, that's the one I know, but I don't think it's fair. I want something that's going to highlight this weirdly awkward position. So I want to end. I want to end with that. Yeah, I want to end with the four there because I'm unconfident with that. So. Okay, something like this. Okay, so I'm getting more confident right here. So, got that down. I've done that twice. Now I'm going to go back to this place and find the solution because it is bugging me right here. And when you find fingerings, you have to put, put them and then play them and see if they sound good. And now it's not that one I'm really concerned about, it's what happens next. That's a very big shift right there. So I'm thinking, do I play the four? Like that. I don't know. I'm going to try what I've been wanting to do. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my third finger. And I'm going to slide it back. 
I'm going to drop this third finger here on that note. And then a one here and lock in the lower second position. So a one, zero. And play this slowly. There it is right there. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go back to this and try it. Seems to feel pretty good. Okay, so. Mm hmm. Oh, it's a 3 3 slide. So sometimes when I teach, I am really. Loving uh, that right there. So there it is. Okay, I may have found the solution. It's time to test it at a relatively slower speed. Yes. So. one success and if you know my style of teaching five times <laughs> yes all right not working on the bowing right now I'm liking that this for so many years, I've done it wrong. Slow it down. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. Just leave that in there. Play it now in context. Once you have, think you have found a good fingering, then it's all, it's all in the details. The devil's in the details right there. That third, that three on that G has been a thorn in my side for quite too long because I would try to I put a four there and I would think it'd do the four two and put a first position. So you ask yourself the question, does it fit in first? Does it fit in fourth? But your knowledge of the general everything and your competencies, again, watch the video I have about fingering. It's super important because it explains so much I'm not going to go into it right now. But yeah, that's important. That three. Now, I'm gonna dial it back a little bit or just sort of zoom out and play. And then here, I need to then jump up here. So then I have to prepare that or maybe not. Let's go right here. I think I have something, but whew, one of my students, I'm trying to get her to slow down. Slow down. Yes. Little wins. Try something different to get in there. Hmm. I think I have found another one. When you're doing fingerings, you have to tinker. Yeah, you have to play it, you have to be frustrated, you have to want it to be better, and then you go back to it. So right here, I'm finding that this release in the first position, excuse me, in the fourth position, the 2-1 right there, and then switching, I'm going to have to write this in, I'm going to have to write 
a 1, 2, like this, super important. Again, I don't expect you to understand, if you do understand this, great, but you're seeing me find these fantastic fingerings right now, you're seeing it live happening in front of you. And, um, and of course I'm practicing something that's frustrating me that I want to sound good. And of course, to remind myself, let's put a zero here on this A. Tip, when you put an open string, when you get better and better, better, when you put an open string at a zero, specifically signifying an open string just out of nowhere, that means something's going to happen. Something's happening. And the happening is here. And the great thing about fingerings, ugh. They seem to flow. <sighs> Boeing. Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. Ah, my bow. We're not working on that now. Let's slow it down. Yes, it's working. That was a fail. That was a fail. I sped up on that one. Okay, that's the minimum. Now I'm going to really work on something else. I'm going to work on putting that in context, not worrying so much about the entire first half. So I'm going to go back to a side part I really like, this right here. Then I'll get to my announcement right there. I'll get to that and then stop there. Yeah. Well, since I'm stopped, for those of you who enjoy my channel, I please hope that you subscribe. More than 75% of you do not subscribe to my content. If you play cello and you want help with me and you want contact with somebody who's been doing this for all his life, who's super passionate about it, who broke his finger, his hand teaching for you guys. I destroyed my finger for you guys, okay? And I came back and I'm coming back with a like a phoenix, as you guys, I want to really do this better, please subscribe and, you know, share and all that good stuff. And I'm on TikTok, <laughs> for those of you on TikTok. And thank you to Keaton and, uh, and company for telling me to go on TikTok. So, tomorrow, I'm doing one of these again, and I'm asking people to call in. I'm going to ask those who do want to call in to download Skype, the app application Skype, because it has a really good NDI. Don't ask me the details. Skype is free and the quality is really good. It's 150 B, um, KPS, 100 KPS per second. Zoom is 50. I'm not going to have that discussion. And Zoom charges per NDI. I'm not going to get into the details. So if you want to have a live lesson with me tomorrow, download Skype. And if I'm the only contact you have on Skype, that's the way it's supposed to be. And then we can have a call in online lesson. So Keaton, if you want to do that, sure. Download Skype. It's free. It's free, you know, and um, and it's good quality too. Okay, it's much better than Meet. It's much better than Zoom. It's the OG sharing of uh, stuff online. So that's my announcement for the live lesson tomorrow. Yeah, and um, so 
finish out my little practice session here. I'll go with some uh, questions that I've gotten online and in the email. So I'm going to start to this little bit of the cello. <laughs> happy I got I got that shit that was one Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I don't know if you caught that, but my app just bugged and didn't include, or maybe I didn't write it in. I can't believe that. Oh, that's just, that's no good. Sometimes my app bugs and does that. Right, and since this is live, I'm going to have to fix that. I was like, why am I annoyed? When you make mistakes, yeah? Write them on. This is important. You got a second finger. Here, this is important. You always write your mistakes. It's like math. You make mistakes, right? So write your two one zero two one and then one two. Again, if you are familiar with how to do chords, it's inverted. One, two, right there. Use this bracket very nicely there. Use this bracket very nicely. I use my colored brackets because we see in color. And you know, one day, you're gonna look back at this time of everyone watching and, and uh, reading music, and I'm gonna keep this up because it puts a point, by the way. We used to watch movies and television in black and white. And people used to say, oh, black and white brings out the emotion, brings out the intensity, da, 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 all this good stuff. And then we started watching things in color, television and, te te and uh, movies in color. Could you imagine, you know, it's, it's got an artistic flair to it, but the depth of seeing in color, why would we not use it for television and movies? It seems silly. But why do we watch, why do we read music in black and white? Why do we experience life in color, but our music's in black and white? One day, everything will be in color. There will be no paper. And hopefully a color-coded uh, shift system, uh, um, position system like my own, will be transferred to the next generations after I'm long dead. So anyway, I just like to put that out there. We live in color. Why do we read music in black and white. It's just my personal thing. So back to here, third finger, dropping the third finger here, which is the lower second position. People say, well, why do you talk about positions? Well, because it helps with strategizing. You know, there are positions more than the first and the second. I mean, more in the first and the fourth. It's, you can either choose to be specific or not. And that's the third finger here. And then closing the loop. Closing the loop means you put all the fingerings that are following. I'm just going to put it in this color here. This is what I do all the time. This is how I practice. So there that is. So raise down. You know, right there. Don't like that. It's ugly. Mm. 
There we go. There's the bracket. A little white spot here. Or my third finger. Ha! Huh, much better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very important. What app is this? You're asking me what app is this? This app, Tanika White, hello Tanika, is Fourscore on the iPad, on the iOS system. But there are good apps as well on the, um, on the, that other thing, Android, <laughs> the Play Store. And for those of you out there that are wondering about my color-coded system, I have right here. And so, do, 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 here it is. There is co o o o -ch. This is a color code system. This is what you need to do. Take a screenshot of this. These are the hex codes. This is exactly the colors I use. And it's going to really help you when you start to use colors to show you the positions. And I'm going to demonstrate that shortly later on in this live stream. Okay. So this is the color codes I use. Take your screenshot. Learn them. Put them in. If you get an application that does this, that you can make little brackets and you can show the lower, upper, second, lower, upper, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That's about, that's a good and half position. Okay. It'll really help you. You're welcome, Tanika. You're welcome. Right. Back to the jig, because of course. It's not that one. There it is, it's, it's in the suite. Anyone we see in color, use colors. All right, then. It's back to this, yeah? I'm not looking what I'm going. Oh. Okay. You got a little shifty shifty there. Get back and skip back on target, yes? Romantic music. Thank you. 
So, I was able to play it in context. And the reason why you should always play it in context after you are done. Um, and I'll get to your questions. Just keep asking them in the, in, in the comments and I'll, I'll answer them. Um, anyway, you should always play it in context, what you're doing. So that feels good. It's going to take more practice sessions to really make it confident sounding, right? So um, a quick little announcement as well. On this side right here, I'm going to actually record this bit so I can actually record at the same time as streaming. This is the first time I'm going to do this, right? <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to do this for the very first time, yeah? Right, here we go. I'm going to try to record and stream at the same time and hopefully it doesn't break the stream. Hi, I have a special announcement and proposal for those of you out there that want to have a little bit of Halloween spirit in your life. Um, I have arranged a song from the latest movie or from the movies, Hocus Pocus. It's called Come Little Children, I'll Take Thee Away. I will leave a link in the video that you wish to see right here to a Google Drive folder temporarily just for about up to Halloween for those of you who want to download it for free and to enjoy this exact version of it. You see all the colors and all the wonderful things. There will be three parts. There is a cello two part, there is a cello one part, and there is a uh, another part. So I call it cello tenor. And I'm going to play all three of them today. Yes? One's going to be played on acoustic cello, one's going to be played on a cello bass, and the other one's going to be played also on a um, uh, regular cello. So, because I'm recording this, let's get right to it and quickly revise what we have here. We have C minor, C minor again, for those of you who want to participate. And it's really going to be easy because you just record yourself with the best quality of sound music possible at exactly 100 beats a minute. Yeah. And you can use this video to play along to. It says not a teaching video. I'm just going to play it exactly to uh, one, you know, 100 beats a minute. And then you can submit your video to me via any sort of, you know, sharing link. And I will include you in my upcoming cover. So 100 beats a minute is where we are at. I've been practicing it at 92. It's a little bit loud. So let's take that down a, t a tick. All right, there you go. Mm. So, yeah, this is quickly, I'm going to eliminate that and just put this at 92. I think it would be a little bit easier. So, 92. And the, the part is going to be a 92. So, let's get right to it. This is Come Little Children, I'll Take the Away. Again, for those of you, I'm inviting my entire channel, for, for shot, I'm inviting my entire channel and anyone who watches this video, if you want to have a little bit of Halloween spirit in your life, do cello coach a favor. Play the song with me. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs>
And so the next section. Do, do, de, de. Ba, bum, with pizzicato it ends with pizzicato right there absolutely love it so that is the first part right there that will be for those of you who are wondering if you're just too lazy take a screenshot of the first half and here's a screenshot of the second half it's copyrighted music and it will be for sale after this video after we have a little project yeah and so, for those of you who want to try the first part, this will be the first part here. Sounds pretty too. And there's a bass cello part, which, unless you have a six-string electric cello, bass cello, then from Ned Steinberger, you possibly don't have uh, what it means, yeah? <clears throat> right, so... Now let's get right to it. All right, as you know, I haven't really worked on this one that much. I should have, but I put my color brackets in here. Quickly doing the A flat right there because of course, <laughs> A flat is needed. Every time you think you might make a mistake, make a notation, do it. Put in your fingering. That's an A flat there. That's an A flat there. It really helps with the understanding. Of course, that's an E flat. Right. This is the first cello part. Bowing is very straightforward, so I'll just, just really concentrate on the fingerings. 17 measures of rest. One. By the way, it's in tenor clef. And you should play this at 92 beats a minute. So again, erasing this. 92. Here we go. One. Oh, sorry. No, always one to one. One, two, three. Here we go. Thank 
So there you go. That is the first and second cello part for uh, Come Little Children, I Will Take Thee Away. Please submit your recordings as soon as possible if you want to practice this and be showcased in my video. Also, if you've seen the movie, Gosh, can I please turn that off? Also, if you've seen the movie, dress up in a Halloween S. Anything Halloween, bring some Halloween spirit to my channel. I would really appreciate it. When this time of year comes around, I really miss being in the United States because nobody does Halloween in France. So, and it's one of my favorite, if not my most favorite holiday. There you have it. It's Come Little Children. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for participating. And... Hey, I will see you, hopefully, soon. Bye. Yes, that was a recording. I actually just recorded a video during this live stream. For those of you out there like, what is he doing? What is he doing? I recorded a video during this live stream right now. Right. Before I get to your questions, I do have to answer one that's been right here, yeah? Um, from Alex Van H., thank you for your patronage, Alex. If you want to get my priority attention, then become a patron. Just two bucks a month, you know? For about one month, he's had a teacher, but he's always focused more on the tone than the left hand. Is that normal for the beginning? I would appreciate a little more technicality from him. When you have a teacher and... The teacher is a concentrate on your tone, Alex Van H. You need to appreciate that time. You need to learn to create a good tone with your bow. And the thing about your bow, yeah, is that it is, here we go. It is designed fully for you to make a good sound. Try this, Alex. And for those of you out there who don't know about this, this is a new technique I'm doing. Take your finger, just hold them like this. And have your bow set like this. And when it does, it's balanced flat. Take the bow, set it against your, your cello. And you need to have to pull against your cello ever so slightly. You know, like this right here. Your hand, your left hand, all essentially just keeps it there in this orientation. Your, your cello is at an angle. And you can see that right there. Your cello is at an angle. So when you play like this, you're essentially playing almost, you know, like this if I put it like terra firma it's, it's very much like that a little bit term is fine yeah so that's what I want you to think about when you're trying to create a good tone recently been working on the beautiful um, air by Bach is when you play this play this I'll bring up air by Bach which is an upcoming video in the very close future yeah very close future by the way I discovered another Ave Maria recently which is Beautiful. So here, in original key major, key signature, why not? G, D major, yeah? Long note, long note, gonna highlight the bow. Look up here, right? And I'm what I'm going to do with this long note. What I'm just doing with that, and I'm going to put it to, I think we were playing at 60 beats a minute. <laughs> so to prove this, to really drive this home, 60 beats a minute. Boom, boom. That's how slow it is, yes? Two, three, four, one. So what I'm doing for those really long notes, if you want to play them in any key signature, yes, because I do everything there is here. Here it is in the key of G major, taking it down to 60. What you're essentially doing is you are allowing your fingers to rest on 
It is there. You're to rest. I mean, excuse me, your bow to rest just like this. And you're pulling it, you're pulling it. So as a practice, if you want to really think about your tone, right to the tone. I'm going to play this. Here's a metronome at 60 beats a minute. It's on the Asian or whichever. I'm going to play just on the D now here. Nine of those clicks. Two, three, four, five, or nine. Again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And having a consistent sound, allowing the bow to really make the sound it's weighted, it's going to make the sound for you. Don't try to force a sound to something like this. And having a good tone is essential to really enjoy the instrument. So Alex Van H or anyone out there when you have a teacher that is that is sort of concentrated on your tone, it's everything. When you think about what is important in playing the instrument, you have to think of the elements like timing, intonation, tempo, rhythm. Tone is very important too. And one day I'll have a video about what are the five most important things as an ensemble cellist and a solo cellist? But I want to give you a hint. Tone is in that top five. Where does it rank? You know, it's important. And it can be variated as it goes through that. So your tone, Alex, and anybody who's out there who's working on tone, your ability to, again, allow the bow. Look at this. Two fingers. Two fingers. Oh, come on now, really? I really got to do this now? I got to do, I get to... get span for a moment. Really? Why is it going to happen? Sorry about that. If you're in the, if you're in the, the, the chat, how to do that. Look at see two fingers. I'm creating the sound by allowing to bow do it itself. Holding against the cello. Not pushing down anything, just allowing the weight. Again, my hand is balanced about allowing the weight to do what it needs to do. Okay? So that would be something right there. Something right there. You delete I know I deleted that message. <laughs> Spam bots. Right. Anyway, back to... Oh, dress up as a cowboy. Yeah, sir, Keaton. Yeah, sure. So let's get right to any questions that have been coming on here on the, the chat, chat, chat. Besides the, the, the spam I just got. I'm sorry for anyone who has been... Who has watched, who has, has saw any of that stuff. Let's just go. In order to Tanika White, I have a... Hol um, well... Really? Vraiment? On n'a pas de, de, vraiment Halloween ici en France. On a une, une fête de quoi? Non, c'est le premier jour, c'est le prochain jour, Toussaint. C'est, c'est important. Mais Halloween? Pas comme les Américains. I, I presume that you are in France. Je presume, <laughs> je crois que tu habites ici en France. And so I, that's why I speak a little French, which I'm trying to speak as much as possible. Oui, um, I want to, uh, I love to have more Halloween spirit here, but if you've ever been to Halloween America, it is, it is America's holiday. Just to keep it, um, totally honest. Okay. So anyway, so for these questions here, how should I apply a pressure from Michael Joe Fish? How should I apply pressure with my left hand? Good question. Right to the left hand. Here we go. How should you apply pressure? In all honesty, you should think of applying pressure as a, as, a, as a result of you pulling back. You are doing this with your, your hand. See right here? I'm not applying pressure as much as I'm pulling my fingers back and I'm creating the sound that way, yeah?
no thumb. And so I'm just pulling the cello into my body. I'm, I'm doing that. Secondly, you should have your fingers curved. A very important thing for anyone new at the instrument. Don't put so much pressure on that you lose that it gets buckled like this. You don't want to do that. You want to have your fingers nice and rounded out. So the tips of your fingers, you're going to have to cut your nails and continue to cut your nails and get used to that. And if you're not, if it doesn't, if, if it's not uncomfortable at the beginning, Michael Joe Fish, maybe you should play a little more effort. Yeah. But don't put so much effort that you lose the shape of your hand. Nice shape. Training the spaces, not the places. I have a whole three part series about how to not squeak on cello. And I talk about training the spaces, not the places. You're training the shape of the hand because you don't have frets. Yeah. So you want to train the shape of the hand as much as possible and round out those fingers. What strings do I use? I use on the, currently um, Tanika. I use Larson Il Canone Warm and um, Warm. Yeah, I, I think that's what it's called. Warm something Il Canone Larson's. I've had it for about a year and a half now. Maybe good for a change. Um. So going back to your, all your questions, Tanika, um, how would one strengthen the beaky finger? Mine very weak, and I can't figure out figure out exercises to help. Hmm. The pinky finger, the little finger. Understand this about your little finger, Tanika. When you are, you first have a pretty cool instrument where you have really thick strings and thin strings. So, and your little finger will never work alone because it will always have the three digits prior. So, being able to use that finger right here, and I'm going to, again, prove a point. I sometimes do this. Now I'm doing something different. Now I'm going to, now have, this is, I'm going to put myself in your position. And so, now I'm doing this. I know because I, I know I have to keep my fingers down, but watch what happens. If I, if I try to play oh, just with the single fourth finger, it is very difficult. When I use all the digits, including the thumb, you know, just replacement, pulling back as I did, I'm able to play the F in first position on the, on the, on the cello. And yes, it's uncomfortable on the little finger. The key is... Strength comes in numbers for your little finger. Always have the other ones help you. I just demonstrated it right now. Hope that helps you. Yeah? So let's go back to this. All right, Keaton, I'm going to ask you, answer your questions. Um, different uh, Dario strings online for intermediate level cellists as myself. What strings do you recommend playing since it's fifth grade? Well, Keaton, you need to take your cello to a luthier. And you need to just put them on there and, you know, start with something. It's a trial and error. I've been playing the cello for very many years and I kind of know the issues strings I like. Some strings you like, some strings you don't. Just get a good set of strings. And if you don't like, it's going to be expensive and it's trial and error. Yeah? As simple as that. There's going to be, there's lots out there. There's synthetic core strings. And the major thing you need to uh, think about is this. Do you want to have a synthetic core string or not? Synthetic core dominance. I don't really know. There's probably another synthetic core string. That's the key difference. Uh, strings with a steel or nickel, some sort of like metal core and strings without metal core. Once you decide which you know, side of the aisle you want to be on, then after that, you can, you can try all different types. You should maybe try, Larson has a beginner, has a sort of like a entry level version. So I'm always telling people, Go to go if you're going to go strings, go Danish. You have to go Jodiger and you have to go Larson. Why? Because the Dario, Helicor, these are strings that were designed by people passionate about the violin. Jodiger and Larson are two companies started by cello players and they're passionate about the cello. I think that should say your answer right there. So, yes, Larson has an entry level um, string. You know, I'll leave an affiliate link. Uh, for you one day i'll leave it here and so you can buy one on amazon i think they're available on amazon yeah okay so that's what i would suggest anyway 
think that's all the questions I have here. And if that's it, then I'm just going to head on out. Hello, Gabe. Hope you got your cello. Um, and by the way, Gabe and, and Keaton, <laughs> I, I'm, I figured you guys would be here. Look at this. Ha ha. Ha ha. What do you think of this? <laughs> Uh, look, look at this. This is me. I mean, this is my video, like shots on TikTok, right? <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. Thanks for suggesting that I do that. I said thanks for suggesting. Um, yeah. Now I know where I've been messing up for ages. Self-taught, no, um, no cellist teachers in my area. You know, Tanika, if you do live in France, then I live in France, and you can take lessons from me online. And you can have all these wonderful shots and la-di-da. But anyway, if you want to know more, please send me an email. So yes, Gabe and Keaton, I'm on TikTok. I'm going to do more of them. I'm going to add value. So again, thanks for your... <laughs> thanks for your... Um, uh, I'm old. I'm, I'll get there. I'm just old. <clears throat> uh, L-A-R-S-E-N. S-E-N. L-A-R-S-E-N. So, do you have any tricks for mastering how much pressure to use with your bow? Mm, a question we've just talked about with the Alex Van H. The first is bow control, right, Gabe? So, understanding that the bow... This right here... That is a good mezzo forte. Mezzo piano, yeah? I'm doing no pressure. Look at that. See, just fingers. I'm just guiding it. Learn... To employ your wrist, see my wrist is moving, and learn to employ your wrist. Learn to allow the bow to do the work for you. Always in control with your index finger and your thumb. But um, I think it's more important when it comes to bow technique is to, again, have that fl uh, fl wrist flattened. And then the pressure is here, Gabe. When he's like, see, I'm torquing. And you don't see it, but the further I go out... Now, here, I'm just holding it. So it's... I'm not creating any pressure. What if I want to get louder as I got to the tip? Then I would... Like, I'm turning on a switch like this. And I'm going to push down my index finger through this side. See, I'm, I'm getting louder in that sense right there. The I would prefer that you start, since you're new, to start to do long strokes and sort of this part of the bow, this part of the bow, and get used to allowing the bow to make the sound. Anyway, I think that's it. I've been here long enough. Um, yeah. If any other questions, well, Tanika, send me an email. I can totally help you out. And for anyone out there who wants to learn cello, I am Pretty good at this whole online thing. My students get videos like like on the YouTube channel. So when you have a lesson with me, you get a video afterward explaining everything, really doing it. And sometimes my students can't be with me. So I send them like how like actual videos where they can follow along. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Keaton. <laughs> I am expanding to my younger market. <laughs> But um, yeah, so when you have a lesson with me, I explain things with, you know, I do have cellos with markings on them, just so it just happens to be a five string cello. And I um, make videos, like highlighting the different things, so you can really revise as much as possible. And we really work hand in hand. All you need is a phone. All you need is, an, is and you can start from there, a phone, and everything else and it's so convenient i wish i had online lessons when i was growing up i wish my teacher offered online lessons but he insists on coming and see me and see if you wish on peut parler français pendant notre leçon okay if that's all well and done thank you alex van age for per participating in my channel um, on my Patreon page. And thank you, Gabe and Tanika and Michael Joe Fish and um, Keaton, of course, and anyone else that I missed. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here. Red shirt guy. <laughs> my name is Jonathan. I teach cello. <laughs>
And wherever you are in the world, thank you for stopping by. Tell us a blessing. And I hope you have a wonderful day as you travel along your own journey of music discovery. I'm going to play something that you can only play on a bass cello. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in. And it's an E flat. It's, it's an A flat. Undo. See, I just have to practice. This is the other part for her. And of course, I want to get to the cool stuff right here. It starts on C. to practice this there is definitely stuff i want to have to practice let's do one more time and see if i can pull this out Hello. 